So in the first part of this lesson we looked at a couple of linear time algorithms. Now I want us to move into algorithms that take longer uh, but still a polynomial uh, function of the input size. So let's start with um, an algorithm that is uh, quadratic time. So imagine that uh, I give you uh, the Euclidean space, right? This is x, this is y. And in this space, you have endpoints. Here is my point 1, right? Uh, some coordinates, x1, y1. Perhaps the second point is here, the third point is here, the fourth point is here, and so on, right? I have a total of uh, n, this is my input size, I have a total of n points, right? And the question is, can you find the pair of points that is at the uh, smallest uh, distance, right? This is the closest pair of points problem. So in this case, probably um, this is the, the pair of points that are closest to each other. How would you do that? Um, brute force way is to consider, of course, every pair of points, right? So if we have n points, uh, it means that we have um, n choose 2, which is n times n minus 1 divided by 2 pairs of points, right? And so we can consider every such pair of points, compute the distance between them, and see which distance is the smallest, right? So this is the algorithm for doing exactly that, right? We have a variable mean that keeps track of the smallest distance we have seen so far. We initialize it, of course, with the distance between the first two points. Notice here that I'm not actually calculating the distance, I'm calculating the, the square root of the distance. I don't take that square root. That's fine because at the end of the day we just want to know which pair of points has the smallest um, distance. Uh, so the relative magnitude of the distances matters, not the actual absolute magnitude. Then, after we have initialized this variable, we have a, a double for loop that will consider every pair of points once, only once, right? So the variable i goes from 1 to n, while the variable j goes from i plus 1 to n. Why do we do that? So that we consider every pair of points once, right? We don't want to consider, for example, the point, you know, p1, p4, and then again p4, p1. So we calculate the distance between the points i and j, which is what you see here, the square of the distance. And if that distance is um, less than the minimum we have seen so far, we update the variable mean. Now, why do we say that this is a quadratic algorithm, right? Because the time to um, execute this is, again, if you think about it um, as a worst-case scenario and uh, just trying to find an upper bound in the running time, a number of iterations in this double um, for loop, which is um, upper bounded by n squared divided by 2. And I will multiply this uh, by a constant, the number of operations we need in order to do this calculation here, the subtractions, the additions, the, the square operations, as well as this uh, if statement. So I group all of those operations into this constant. Now later in the course we will see uh, a better algorithm that can actually run in um, time that is not quadratic but it is what we call n log n which means that uh, in that case the running time is upper bounded by a function that looks like this n times log n times a constant, right? But that will be discussed uh, much later in the course. Now, let's look at a uh, cubic time algorithm, right? As you can expect here, the running time will be um, upper bounded by a cubic function of n. So what's the problem here? We're given n sets, s1 through sn, each of these sets 
is a subset of these n uh, numbers, right? So you can think of it that perhaps I'm giving you n objects, and each object has a, an identifier from 1 through n. So each of these uh, sets that I give you uh, is a different subset of these n objects. For example, S1 may be the objects 1, 4, 7, S2 may be the objects 1, 2, 3, 7, and so on and so forth, until we reach the final set, which may be, say, 1 and 9, right? So I'm asking here, can you find any pair of these sets, S, I, S, J, that are disjoint, they don't uh, have any elements in common. For example, if you had a set, let's say, S3, which is, let's say, 5 and 6, S3, as you can see, it is actually disjoint with uh, all of these other sets that I wrote earlier, S1, S2, and Sn. Now, how would you solve this? If you think about it, we can consider, first of all, all pairs of uh, sets, right? So the two initial for loops, they consider every set SI, and then the inner for loop considers every other set SJ. Now that we have a specific um, pair of sets, we want to see if any element, right, any element P of the first set is actually part of the second set. If that is the case, then the two sets are not disjoint, right? So, uh, if we can find that uh, no element of SI belongs in SJ, then we can uh, output these two sets as disjoint. Now, how long does this algorithm take? We have this uh, external double for loop, right? So, given that we have n subsets, we can have at most n square pairs of uh, subsets. Again, the upper bound should be n squared. If you want to be more precise, you can divide by 2. For each element of the first set, you have to check if it belongs in the second set. But this second set, how many elements can it have in the worst case? At most, n elements in uh, the set SJ. So this uh, third for loop can take, at most, n operations. So we have n uh, squared over 2 possible pairs of uh, subsets times, uh, at most, n operations um, for the third for loop. This gives us the upper bound on the running time of uh, n squared over 2 times n times a constant. Again, the constant represents any fixed number of operations I have to perform in each of these iterations. And that is cubic um, function of n. Now let's consider uh, a, a polynomial time algorithm more general than what we saw earlier. Imagine that I give you a graph of uh, n nodes I also give you a constant uh, k, so let's call the nodes here a, b, c, d, e. We can add an extra edge between a and d. So imagine that um, I give you a specific value of k, and I ask, can you find a subset of k nodes in this graph such that these k nodes are not connected with an edge between them. As you can see in this example, I cannot find three nodes that are not connected with an edge uh, between them. If, however, I pick k equal to 2, uh, then I could uh, find the pair of nodes, say, um, D and E, or uh, B and C. These are 
pairs of nodes that are not connected with an edge. So this is the problem. It is referred to as uh, the independent set problem and there are two important uh, uh, numbers here. One is the size of the graph n which we are assuming that it is a variable while this parameter k here is not a variable it's considered a constant right this this difference between what is a variable and what is a constant is very important when you are analyzing the running time of algorithms the constant parameter does not grow it's so how would you solve this problem one approach would be all the possible subsets of k nodes right so if i have n nodes and I choose um, k of uh, these nodes, how many possible um, sets of k nodes do I get? I get n choose k. So I have this number of possible subsets of k nodes. And for each of these subsets, we need to check whether there is an edge between any two nodes in that subset. The algorithm that we can write for this problem is that we have this for loop. It considers every subset of k nodes. And for each of the subset s, we check if uh, it is an independent set, meaning that if there is an edge between any pair of nodes in that set. Okay? So how long would this take? How many times do we need to execute this for loop? We have n choose k possible subsets. Let's um, try to uh, simplify this a little bit. What is this upper bounded from? You can think of the denominator, right, as um, k factorial. The numerator, how many terms do we have in this product? We have k terms, right? And so the upper bound could be n raised to the power k, right? So this ratio here is an upper bound for the number of iterations of this for loop. Now, how long does it take to check if one of these subsets is actually an independent set? Given that S has uh, k elements, we have basically k choose 2, which is k times k minus 1 divided by 2. We have um, k squared divided by 2. That would be my upper bound for the number of pairs of elements in the subset S. These are the pairs that I have to check whether uh, they are connected with an edge or not. So what is the total running time of this algorithm? I have this upper bound for the number of uh, possible subsets. And I have to do at most this much work to check if any of the subsets is an independent set. K is a constant. So I can think about all of this thing here as a constant. And the only variable, the only term in which the variable n um, is, is part of is the n raised to the k power. So this is why I call this a polynomial time algorithm, right? It's a, a polynomial um, function of the input size n where the exponent is a constant. It is the size of the independent set. So this is an example of an algorithm that even though it has a polynomial running time, we would think of it as an efficient algorithm only for small values uh, of k, right? Efficient only for low 